All right, folks, it's time to start tackling this uh, beast. Um, I actually got the marquee uh, back working again. And uh, yeah, the control panel uh, came out really nice now. I've very, very ever so slightly uh, sprayed uh, these white and it did a world of difference and a very light coat of, uh, of, um, uh, of, oh, lacquer. And uh, yeah. Very cool, very nice, um, and I'm I'm happy with the uh, like I said battle marks. Not a problem. It's just I didn't want to have that yellow, um, that yellow. So they still look rough, but at least uh, they're a bit whiter now. And uh, I mean from here, you wouldn't even know. Um, I have this on, uh, so I disconnected everything. I actually cleaned. Uh, the bottom clean the uh, power supply and I'm having a slight trouble with the power supply it keeps blowing that fuse here which is the 10 volt that goes to the air board so I wonder if this was a problem with this to start with um, could it be the big blue I don't know enough about these uh, so I'm gonna do some research I, I've uh, I've printed a few pages and I can't remember the person who, uh, who uh, compiled all that information about this uh, these uh, supplies so I'm just going to look that up and see why, because I've disconnected everything and it still blows the uh, power, the, um, the fuse when I have it on. Interesting, you have all these jumpers here that allow you to set it to different uh, um, voltage settings and it was already on the 240 volts, uh, which is interesting because it came from the US and I don't, I don't see how or why that would have set like that, been said like that. Um, there and then so I, I don't know interesting uh, so first this and then we're, we'll tackle the AR board I might do a separate video on that AR board uh, just because there you go and um, yeah so let's uh, let's have a look at that uh, I've pulled it out already put it back in just to clean it and uh, but I need to pull it out again and see why that 10 volt uh, rail is uh, is that it yeah that's the one that's the F2 which is here f1 is this guy isn't it oh i can't remember no f2 yeah f2 is this guy f1 is here yeah there you go f2 is this guy that's the uh 10.6 volt and uh, that i believe is going to the uh the ar board whereas the rest of to the bridge feed kind of uh, lamps or these lighting at all Actually, I need to check. They're probably not. They're probably dead. Um, bridge right shift rectifier input. So yeah, why is this? Uh, why is this blowing? Uh, and if it's not feeding 10 volt, or does it need that AR board to be connected even just to get that load? And it's it's blowing because it's not getting a load. I don't know. Anyway, that wouldn't make sense to be honest. Um, okay, let's. Uh, Let's uh, keep keep working. Right, so it's time to start the uh, structural repair or the wood repair on this uh, guy. Um, so I have this uh, on its side up, and uh, luckily, luckily, there's not there's no structural issue. I think the worst area was here, and you can see it's slightly raised due to due to the uh, would have been dampness, you know, wood swelling. Especially this type of wood has a tendency to swell a lot. So it's, uh, I've chipped away as much as I can here. Uh, it just, uh, that's where really it was badly affected. But beyond that, it's still solid. It's tiny chips that I miss, but it's just, it's not a big problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some, uh, some wood treatment, like to prevent rot and, uh, and solidify. This is like, it's like a, a bonding glue type of stuff. Uh, I remember I had some of that for, I think it was the Pac-Man Cabaret. And then I, I'll just rebuild this. Uh, you know what I, I'm thinking about doing is getting some liquid resin and just applying a layer of that because liquid resin like that will seep into the wood and just bond it properly. Um, so I might just do that, especially this type of stuff. It's very, very porous. And uh, and then use some uh, filler or bondo type of stuff. Um, the the artwork wasn't too affected. Thing the the only uh, area where 
it might surfer was this corner like little tiny corner but not much you can do about that had to be uh had to be removed so i can treat it properly and the bottom is sound it's not the cleanest but it's sound um i don't see any woodworm traces of woodworm or anything like that uh, so i'm going to put wheel casters on this it'll make uh, my life much easier so i've removed everything i have the monitor here uh, that's going to be uh, another project for another time but uh, I, I'm just going to redo the, uh, I'm just going to recap it um, and uh, and then see what happens after that. But uh, yeah, I think I think that might be just the, uh, the best option. It's out. Um, yeah, this thing is old. I don't see any trace of previous work. So the original uh, uh, resist, um, resistors are here, those giant resistors. Um, if the die, you can actually just uh, a jumper them. Actually, just replace them by uh, just a jumper. Um, they're not strictly needed. In fact, it was, I think I believe it was recommended um, at some point. So I'll, I'll do a bit more research on the monitor. But uh, what is it? It's uh, Wells Gardner 19V2000. Um, I believe there's a giant diode in this as well that probably needs to be a. Uh, looked at and replaced and that kind of stuff uh, it's not a job i'm going to do now uh, control panel uh, is fine some blemishes here it's actually good to have it out like that so i think yeah i need to get supplies so it's going to be a a few days or maybe a week before i can start working on this actually working on this but um i've done i've scraped the other side as well i've just scraped as much as i can most of the just the dirty wood um so this is going to be, uh, I'm just going to use, you know, filler here to even out the line and then uh, I'll use some uh, some spray paint. You can see where the vinyl starts. So I wonder if this was actual vinyl here applied and then spray paint on this black, which would be perfect then. Um, it looks like that's what it was, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's order some stuff. All right, so I got some uh, wood treatment thing, whatever it's called. Uh, it's called wood treatment, uh, wood preserver. Anyway, I applied it uh, generously in some areas. You can see the difference it makes. It's a brown. I, I chose a brown one um, because that, well, they only had brown in the shop, to be honest. Um, anyway, so it's uh, here was the worst corner. So I'm just going to let it dry overnight and then gonna start just building up this so I'm not gonna use uh, um, like the the standard bondo type stuff that you see I'm gonna use some fiber uh, mix uh, isopon mix for uh, it's used for boats and a lot of just more structural repairs also I want to strengthen this uh, corner here because the t-molding will come here and this will be a corner I'm not sure exactly but um, well although I put wheel casters here so uh, but just in case, because it's a bottom corner like that, get more uh, m more exposed to things. So what I'm going to do anyway, just to reinforce uh, this area, I'm just going to uh, uh, put nails, small tiny nails here. Uh, sorry, here, all the way here. I want to be careful not to put them this way, because here I need to redo the T-molding at some point. Uh, so if I do that and then I cut the nails, well, that's, you know, the, the whole point of putting the nails. Um, so uh, I'm going to put in this way, uh, all the way here. And it'll just provide a bit of a structural bond as well between the, the fiber and the, and, the, um, and the wood. The stuff I'm going to use is, uh, it's this guy. It's a fiber mix. Or is it this one? Filler, yeah, it's not the filler. Like, um, yeah, actually that's... Yeah, repair, repair. Which one is which? Okay, one is a paste, which is the standard bondo you see, and one is uh, it's a paste as well, but it has a fiberglass mix, and it's a uh, it's a bit more. Uh, it's not as opaque as the other one. Anyway, I think that's the red one here. That's the one I'm gonna use. 
and then I use this one just for finer little holes and dents. But uh, for anything structural you want to use that sort of mix, um, it'll all become clear when I start using it. But for now, let's uh, let the, this dry. I'm tempted here because it's still very weak. I mean, this doesn't actually strengthen the wood. It just preserves it. Uh, just prevents rot and and because when wood like that is exposed you know it's a it's a nest for uh, for dampness and rot to set in before you do the repair and, and rots from inside so i'm just using that now to prevent that i might use some uh some very liquid wood glue just so that it just uh, uh should i once i've got a uh, fiberglass it won't matter really um i'll see i'll see tomorrow all right, so we replaced our big blue cap um, with uh, this one. This comes from uh, Arcade Parts and Repair. It's all the way from the US, uh, so you have to wait a few days if, like me, you're in Europe to get it. But uh, there you go. Um, if you're unsure, because here there's no visible other than underneath uh, sign of polarity, and here is the negative side. If you're unsure, um, you can see... Actually, this is... Gonna be awkward with one hand. Let me just try this. There you go. This thing is heavy. If you're unsure of the polarity, um, uh, this board here will tell you exactly. Thank you, phone. Where the negative sign is, and it's well, it's under here anyway. Um, but this board has a, just a negative sign there, so it, it'll uh, let you know where to put it. This is so heavy. Anyway. So negative goes on this side, um, but just double check if you have that board underneath. This should be a sign somewhere. All right, so I'm starting to fill uh, with this corner and this corner. Um, it doesn't look great, but uh, once it starts to gel, you can go at it with a, a razor blade. I'll try, to, I'll try and show that later on. Um, so wait about an hour, smooth it out with that razor blade. It'll make your sanding much uh, easier afterwards. So I'm just going to use that to fill as a filler for those uh, big uh, recess and then I will fill the rest or even it out with uh, proper isopon bondo type stuff. But here it's just mostly for a uh, strength of the corner that I'm doing this. Um, I still have over here to do. I actually put a small uh, layer of uh, fiberglass, liquid fiberglass, um, resin, sorry, liquid resin, just so that it would seep in the wood, which it did, it's great, and feels solid now. I have my nails in, and uh, I'll do the same thing on here. I'll do the same thing on here. All right, folks, bit of an update here. Um, I've done this side here, and I've repainted. You can see I've masked the artwork with uh, some paper. I'm just finishing these small bits here. Uh, they're not too bad. That was the worst. There was a big gash here. So I'll do a few kind of sand pass bondo sand. Uh, but here there's no need for fiber. I'm just uh, filling those two uh, holes here that were used for just a security bar uh, that operators would put in uh, in cabs just to prevent people from uh, ripping the, uh, the front door to steal the money. Um, but that left, you know, two big holes. In, in a lot of modern, well, cabs that you get now, uh, you, you have this bar or two big holes if they remove the bar altogether. So I'm um, filling those, send them down. Uh, actually here, once it's cleaned up, it's it's quite nice. Uh, it's quite clean. So yeah, this was where the biggest corner, there was, uh, there was a chunk gone and all here was just, uh, it was eating into the artwork. So I think... I think it's okay. I'll know for sure once I remove the artwork, or well, the the uh, mask, and uh, you can see still, you know, some marks and that kind of stuff. But it's just you really have to be close. And it really depends on the light. Uh, for instance, yeah, you can't really see it that much. If you, yeah, if you get it like that, you can definitely see it. And my dirty fingers. So it's going to be a trade-off of uh, how pristine do I want it. I could just go again and sand it. Uh, it's going to take a few passes actually to even out all the sanding. To be honest, I don't see it. Just the camera brings it, but I don't really see it. It's the same here. Uh, here didn't come out too bad actually. Uh, I've used some... Oh yeah, <laughs> you can see. Oh my god, this really 
brings out the uh I can't even feel that. Um, that just might be the camera artifact, but to be honest, uh, it's not really visible, considering as well how uh, bad a shape the cab was in. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. I've done this uh, entire length there as well. You can see actually the uh, the black isn't quite the same. Uh, there's a different reflection from the uh, original uh, original black in here. So what I might do at, after once this is all done, I might just uh, do a a very light clear coat, and it'll uh, I think hopefully blend some of the uh, the different hues of black if I can uh, describe it like that together. Uh, but all in all, I mean, all in all, it's it's quite quite good. The, if I look at the uh, the next patch to do here, you can see how rough it is, uh, and this is this was the best side. So uh, this side was pretty bad. So yeah, I'm happy. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry while I'm gonna finish here. And then, uh, instead of flipping it over, I'm gonna actually gonna do the T-molding straight away. That way it'll be done. And also, the reason I want to do it first is because the cab needs to be on this side. Because the T-molding goes all the way under. So uh, while it's like that, it's saving me from moving it again. I'm gonna staple one here, one here, go around, come back and then staple here in place and be done with this side and then I can move on to the uh, the other side which is uh, should go much much faster because it's uh, it's nowhere near as bad um, but this cab this cab was in a very poor uh, state indeed uh, at least I didn't have to repair uh, replace any wood uh, I can see here some uh, is that oh I thought it was a corrosion no it's just wood chipping so would I bother Doing that, would I just put a coat of paint uh, over this as well? Maybe some wood, uh, wood protector, uh, and uh, a coat of paint just to strengthen it, and uh, be happy with that. I think that's what I'll do. Uh, the edges here are okay. I'm going to leave them like that. Obviously, clean them. Um, maybe here, just uh, it doesn't seem to have taken any wood, so just cut that with a fine, uh, fine blade, and then uh, just paint over it. Uh, other than that, I think. Once all the uh, this is all the cosmetics actually that will uh, need to be done. There was one uh, this big area here which I'm gonna do last once I've done everything. But I've already started as you can see, just uh, patching and fixing. It's kind of hard to get the exact same. Uh, it's not quite flush, but uh, considering all the wood was chipping all the way up to here, you can see I've uh, I've patched and painted here. Uh, I need to redo this and resand it slightly, but um, what I'll do is I'll wait until the cab is back up and then uh, so I'm waiting for this to dry properly. It's really hard in this section not to, uh, you know, uh, destroy the uh, the serial, um, serial sticker, but uh, we'll do our best. But yeah, so this is, uh, well, this is better than it was again. Um, it's actually quite nice and smooth. So I might put just a first coat of paint. First coat of paint would actually help me see all the bumps. Once it's all uniform, one color, uh, see where all the bumps are, sand that back, and then uh, and then reapply paint or bondo if needed, just to really smooth everything. But right now I'm not seeing too much. Yeah, you can see here it's like small gaps in the hole. So I might need to. Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna apply paint, uh, sand and uh, rebondo afterwards but i'm gonna do this once the uh, cab is up uh, the back there as well let me see if i can go around is uh, i have to uh, do this as well uh, and uh, yeah this came out quite quite well i mean a weird angle here oh, it's just straining on my abs um so let's keep working and finish the side and then I'll do, uh, I'll do the team molding. And there you go, folks. That's pretty much it uh, here for this side. Uh, I've put the uh, team molding back on. Um, so you can see there's a few scuffs and things like that, but they were here before. You can see all these uh, marks over there and here. Uh, battle damage, I don't mind. There's still one thing I need to do, and uh, it's here. You can see the, uh, the difference between the two blacks. So you can see whatever that screen print here. And here that was probably done uh, as a first layer and then that went on top 
Um, so all along this edge, it doesn't really matter because there's a, a clear mark. Um, but when it comes to here, those two blacks, which is painting off the cab and this black here don't match. So I started blending them here on this side uh, by just essentially using some very, very fine sandpaper, like 400, um, or is it 600? I can't remember. Just very fine going, uh, taking my time and just blending them sort of in circular, circular motion. So I started again, I've done it all over there. Uh, there's a few blemishes here, I see. No, that's just dust and the uh, light. So there's a big scratch here that sort of uh, looks like it's a, um, well, it's gonna, yeah, making it difficult to find exactly where the line is, but I can see actually, it makes me swap hands. I still need to do this patch here, and then uh, obviously all this area I still have to do all the way uh, to here. And then here we're getting back into that sort of uh, the, uh, the limit of that uh, screen print. So I'll do that next, just blend that. Uh, well, I'll do that, no, sorry, I'll do the other side next. I'm gonna flip this cab over and do the other side. Uh, and then I can do the blending uh, like I did here. Can do the blending uh, once the cab is upright. It might be easier actually to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll get to see better. Um, so yeah, let's uh, keep working. I probably won't fix the other side because it's gonna be the same stuff as here. Just uh, fixing that, that corner here. You can see I, I lost a tiny bit of artwork, but not too much. Uh, and I'm okay with that, uh, to be honest, because it's it'll be in the far end corner. It won't be, I mean, probably won't even be visible. Um, in fact, the most visible is all these uh, scratches on the art. But like I said, I don't mind battle damage uh, too much. I can live with that. Um, brings a bit of history uh, to the cab. Uh, so uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's blend this afterwards uh, once it, the cab is upright, and then we can worry about the uh, insides. All right, I lied. Um, well, this time I use, uh, uh, I'm showing you the other side here. Uh, this time I actually use just a mask um, here with some uh, uh, masking paper and just poured some liquid resin. Uh, I find this actually grips uh, a lot better. Bondo has tendency to flake. This is very, very solid. Um, yeah, Bondo is not really structural and, and, and something as a, as critical or as fragile as corners, it will have a tendency to flake off. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm using here for this side. Uh, so we, we'll see if it makes a difference. But anyway, so I have that just done all over the uh, the uh, the cab, and uh, I just need to sand it back down flush, and hopefully we'll get nice uh, sharp corners. Um, there you go. All right, I think we're all done here. Hello, dude. Uh, I think we're all done here. So that's the sides we store. So really, the the big damage was uh, in well, this well, that was the medium damage in this corner. Um, I still have to do some blending here between those two blacks, but uh, that's that's okay. I can do that in time, and the cab is upright uh, as well. Actually, no. What am I saying? No, no. This is the um, this is the sticker. This is the end of the sticker, or the, the whatever, the overlay or something like that. I'll see if I can just maybe blend them a little bit, uh, so it doesn't show as much. But I mean, you know, up close you see it. Uh, here you don't see it. Uh, so this is the worst side of the art. Uh, you can see all this kind of flake in here. This is gone, gone here. But I mean. Uh, it's a big gouge. I'm not sure if this is meant to be a gouge or looks like it is because this is silk screen so it's all done in layers and uh, you can see the layer underneath here big massive gouge in the wood. I might actually just see if I can patch that with just some black um, at least just to protect the wood. There's another section here gone but do you know it's it's battle damage. Um, I bought it as a well, non-working cab, but knowing it was battle damaged um, and just the fact that the wood is restored, I'm happy with that. And I'm just a custodian of this uh, this cab until, you know, I, 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 I die and somebody else gets it or I get sick of it and I sell it. But uh, so I leave that to the next person maybe to change all the art. There is also uh, this other side, which was uh, where the wood was actually the worst. And I, I spend most time, but the art was okay. The art was actually okay. 
But um, yeah, here, so this corner was completely gone. Uh, dude is uh, shouting at the uh, neighbor there. Um, so this corner was completely gone. I, I, uh, I only lost this tiny bit of art, uh, something like that here. Uh, this corner wasn't great either. And, uh, and this side was just, uh, yeah, it was just, this side was the worst as far as the wood was concerned, but I patched that. Um, now I, uh, I've just sanded back some of this area. So I'm just gonna apply uh, another layer of paint and see where I am at. I uh, still have this edge to do, but you know, it's, uh, it's just stuff I'm gonna do little bit by bit. As far as the cap is concerned, this is sound and, uh, I shouldn't put all my uh, dusty fingers all over it. Um, new T molding as well. So handy to have this on the wheels. So put brand new T molding because the other one was just, it was just too far gone. It was really, uh, it had lost its flex and it was just dirty, filthy, filthy, I'd say. Um, so uh, next, I think the control panel is pretty much ready to go back. I'm not going to do anything to this control panel. It's only one small patch here that I might just uh, patch with spray paint. But other than that, I'm going to leave. Uh, these are the buttons I restored. So I think the next job is to work on those uh, power supplies. But uh, as far as this cab is concerned, um, I need to remove the mask in here, masking tape. As far as this cab is concerned, I think this is it for for this video, for the, uh, for the cosmetic uh, restoration of this uh, asteroid cab. I'm pretty happy. It wasn't meant to be uh, just a complete restore. It was just uh, uh, basic maintenance on the wood. Give it another uh, maybe 20 years. Uh, and uh, and if somebody else, once I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sick of this cab, I probably won't be because I wanted an asteroid for so long, but who else, whoever else gets it after me um, will probably want to replace the art. I'm not going to do that. I like the fact that it's still original. I like the battle scars and uh, it, it's still okay. Um, either side actually are, are still rather okay. I mean, this is the worst, worst side, but it's still, uh, you know, I can very much live with that. And uh, yeah, so um, next job is going to be to work on the power supplies, that big blue uh, box and the uh, the AR board. Uh, so that's going to be in another video. So this video is done here, folks. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was somewhat interesting as usual and uh, as usual you can find me uh, pretty much everywhere uh, facebook twitter instagram i'm not on tiktok because you know i'm not 12 and uh, and there's a patreon page and youtube membership if you want to help the channel folks thank you for watching and i'll see you next time